as you know, on today's episode, the most powerful thing you can change. Let's hear that again. That'd be something really good to know. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. What is the most powerful thing you can change in your life? Wow. We're just these guys, you know. Bump. Get the my headphones on. Powerful thing you can change. Oh, now I feel like I'm in the house. There we go. It Welcome. is really awkward to be over there without the headphones on. And you're having this whole show in your own head. And yeah. I'm not part of it. You're just, <laughs> you're on the other side. I'm like, why is he smiling? You're over there. <laughs> Film crew in it. Kay. The most powerful thing you can change. Now, for the audience, I'm not here. <laughs> this show is pre-recorded the week before it's airing. Mm-hmm. I am not here because I am mm. somewhere on a beach. Right now. Yeah, sucker. Hanging out in beautiful beaches. Well, last week, about 10 minutes ago, last week, <laughs> you were celebrating Dawn's birthday. Yep. And her her wonderful 33-year-old attitude and demeanor and appearance, right? Yes. Yes. Mm, yes. Not a day over. Although... You know, you've been married long enough. Maybe she does like to be called 72. I don't hey! know. Nope. Maybe that helps the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 So, yes. Um, this week is my birthday, and Tish arranged for us to take a short vacation, go to a beach, enjoy very the cool. weather. Very, very cool. Well, I hope as we listen to this, you are enjoying yourself. I probably am. I'm sure you are. <laughs> That's awesome. So the most powerful thing you can change. Right. So means it's the most important thing you can change. You you work with people. Yeah. I work with people. Right. And you have that conversation all the time with people about their struggles in life. Mm -hmm. And you know they they want to they want to make changes. They, they want to change. They want to change their life. They want to change the direction of their life. They want to change. And so they'll change jobs. Right. They'll change friend groups. They'll change from drinking a whole lot on the weekend to going to church on the weekend. They'll, they'll make changes. They're making changes trying to improve their life, improve their attitude, improve their mood. Sorry, that was my hand. They may change the school that they attend. Mm -hmm. They may change the school their children attend. They may change their major, they may change cities. Change things around them. Change their spouses. Mm -hmm. Change their boyfriend, change their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. People are constantly making changes, trying to improve, but they're all missing the most important change. Can we drag it out a little more, make this podcast a little bit longer? The tension is building. <laughs> change your attitude. Sure. Change your attitude. Change you. Change your attitude. Change your life. Mm -hmm. Change how you feel. Change how you think. Change your perspective. If you change your attitude, everything else around you will begin to change. It will. It'll be amazing when you change your attitude, how people who were... <laughs> just wallowing in the misery of your old attitude, they'll just go away. Right. That that change will come very natural. And so, and the, the, I'm watching examples uh, recently of, of people who are really making some changes. They're making powerful changes. Uh, one gentleman that I think of uh, got baptized this last uh, Sunday. He went, he's gone through, years of, of, uh, recovery. Uh -huh. And he's, he's been clean and sober now for almost a year. Wow. He got baptized and, but now I'm, I'm watching him on Facebook giving rants to the people who were, are trying to, in his words, drag him down. Oh yeah. 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 He's giving them power by doing that. 
by responding oh, to that. Oh, by responding. Okay, I see what you're Yeah, saying. by even putting anything out there. Sure. He needs to just keep his eyes focused in the in the windshield and move forward. Right. And let them just kind of fall into the past. It's also amazing how when we don't give energy to what people are going to do to try to drag you down and keep you held back, it, it, they'll just go away. Sure. It's like the child who is, is on the ground kicking and screaming and throwing a fit. And if you give them your attention, that's exactly what they want. Right. Ignore them. At least do your best. Hen- Henry Ford said problems are those things you see when you take your eyes off the road. There you go. Obstacles. Obstacles are those things you see when you take your eyes off the road. Yeah, that's good. Stay focused and there will be a moment of, of you know, breaking through the, the atmosphere yeah. where the ship rumbles and you think it's going to fall apart. But that's those people, their last ditch effort trying to keep you in their clutches, keep mm-hmm. you in their misery. And yeah. Misery loves company. And as you try to walk away, come on, stay, have one more beer. Don't go yet. Mm-hmm. They love company. They want you to stay because they're miserable. They want you to be miserable. They want to gossip. They want to yeah. talk smack on other people they want to pull you down and if you walk away they will clamor after you for a little bit yeah but if you keep walking so what's the really the first step in in once you've decided you want to make that change you want to change your attitude what's what's one key step that you can take i don't know well (laughs) how about read 12 (laughs) 2 you could do that yeah that's one thing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> really, fundamentals because it really goes back to the fundamentals the the most important thing really honestly and this is what this is what research has shown is you you deciding mm-hmm. that you want to make a change yep. that's that's the key success follows after you make that decision well it's kind of like last week what you got to do what you want to do is show up for you right if you if you want to make a change if you want to change your life you coming to that point, making that decision, that's the thing that unlocks the door. Everything after that is technique. Yeah. And whatever technique it is doesn't really matter, but it's what aligns with you. Um, you know, when I worked in the prisons, uh, the the prison system down in Texas, they would try to rehabilitate uh, people who have been incarcerated. And so they would have these different programs and they're you can't just experiment on people. So you got to get volunteers with your new program. And once you run the program and show nobody's going to die during it Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) and it it shows some success, then the Bureau of Prisons will allow it to go, you know, more uh, widely scattered throughout the other prisons. So they would, you know, try different programs like, you know, training dogs and they get these volunteers, they go in and they train the dogs. And after they train the dogs and build this bonded relationship with the animal, Guess what? Those gentlemen had lower recidivism rates mm. than those who were not in the program. So they put the program prison wide. Yep. And the recidivism rate stayed the same. And then they tried art therapy and those who, people who got to use art and express themselves and their emotions, well, after we run the program for a little bit, compare their recidivism rates to the rates of the general population, their recidivism rates are lower. So let's get art therapy all throughout the prison. And they did that. And the recidivism rates stayed the same education and college and training and work programs, everything they did during the experimental phase showed promise and showed lower recidivism rates. But the moment they instituted a prison wide recidivism rates stayed the same. Why? Key answer. The people in the experiment were volunteers. They wanted to change. You got a program that'll bring about change? I'll sign up. (laughs) They're wanting to change. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Last time I came to therapy with you, I sat in that chair. I'm back here again. I'm sitting in this chair. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Brilliant advice I got from a client. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Hmm. You know, paint a a wall in your house. If you want to change, you will change. Now, one of the tools available to you is an awesome book called 12-2, How to Transform Your Mind. Yep. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know about it. But that is one tool available to you. Therapy, great tool to help people change. 
And if you don't feel you're making changes with your current therapist, change to a new therapist. It's We all have different approaches, different tools, different techniques. If you're in a church, you don't feel like you're being fed, mm -hmm. change to a new church. If you want to make a change in the direction of your life, that's the key right there. How many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but the light bulb's got to want to change. Exactly. If you want to change, change <laughs> will occur. Yep. And so, you know, if you think about it, we're talking about not changing your location, not changing your job, your career, your major, your spouse, changing your attitude. Sure. And once you change your attitude, Everything else begins to change. Your motivation begins to change, how you see things, the utility of certain things, the sense of certain things begin to change. The, the, the nonsense of things begins to change. Mm -hmm. Why am I spending all my money on this when I could be spending it on that? And so if you think back into the Bible, how many times was this reflected? Oh, all over the place. As a man thinketh. Mm-hmm. So is he. Yep. So if you want to change who you are, change how you think. Yep. Change your attitude. Yep. We you talked a few episodes back on an attitude of gratitude. And so that's a great place to start. Is just immediately you can can change your attitude by looking at what at where you're at. Right. And find the things that you're grateful for. Find the things that you, and I know you're looking around at your environment, but you're, you're, you can look at the things that you're thankful for instead of wallowing into the things that you're not thankful for and that, that are kind of just keeping you in that bad attitude. Well, if you're going to cook a meal tonight, you open the cabinets and see what your ingredients are. Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is what I got to cook with. And, and I am thankful. <laughs> can I tell a short story? Yep. Uh, years ago when I was... Back when I was in the Navy, I was I lived on this separate island, so I didn't have access to a grocery store right away like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I opened the cabinet, going to make a pizza, because I had the pizza box of dough and a hot dog. And that was going to be my dinner. There you go. And so I got the pizza box. And all I got to do is mix water, flour, roll it out. I was going to smear the sauce that came with it on it and cut up a hot dog on it. That was going to be my meal. I was looking forward to that. That's all I had. Yep. At least for a day. That's all I had. Yeah. But you had it. I had it. Yep. And then I opened the box and dumped it in the bowl. Up until I dumped that box in the bowl, I had never known what a weeble looks like. <laughs> you think you just got some more protein. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that powder in the bowl. I mean, those are weebles. <laughs> I've heard about them. I wonder what they taste like. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> you did it, didn't you? I was mixed it up. Yes. <laughs> Baked the heck out of it. Oh, heck. I yeah. had a crispy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> put that sucker on bake and then I put it on broil. It came out. It was like it was like chewing on uh, crunchy cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> But I got me some protein. You did, and you were thankful. Yeah, I was Bear Grizzly before Bear Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bear would be like, I'm not eating that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, change your attitude. Jesus said, "What comes out of your uh, what comes out of your mouth flows from their your heart. heart." Yeah, and your heart. He's not talking about your physical. He's talking about your your mind, your thinker, your feeler, your perspective, your attitude, your heart. Yep. And when you change your heart, what you say, what you do, how you see other people, that all changes. Yeah. You know, I, I dare say 15 years ago, if you had seen somebody circle in the parking lot slowly, 15 years ago, maybe you might not have walked out in the parking lot mm, and yeah. waved at them. From last week, yeah. Um, but probably not. Something in that moment, your heart, you were open, you're, you're serving, you're up there serving food. This is Tuesday nights. It's mm -hmm. not a requirement. You got to be there. You, you, something told you when you change your attitude, you change how you see things and being thankful for what you have that allows you to now assess what ingredients I got to go forward with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that I've is... got good health. I've got a nice house. I've got a good spouse. Um, I've got some intelligence in me. Mm. I've got some willingness to show up. I've got some goodness. So it really, truly does. Changing your attitude changes your perspective. It changes how you see things. And it goes back to that whole thing where now all of a sudden your perspective is no longer your prison. Your perspective is your power. Boom. Mm, man. And so talk about living a life worth living is a life that is filled with power. And just to wrap this one up, there's a gentleman, won't say his name. He knows who he is. Um, you've met him, sent him my direction, mm -hmm. changed his attitude. Mm -hmm. He's now applying for jobs he is not qualified for. <laughs> awesome. But he's like, hey, all I can say is no. Yep. I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that job. I want to be that guy. So I went and applied for the job. Mm -hmm. And they told me, well, that job usually comes with people who have had college. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, I can learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I, th I told him, you know what? You got a 50-50 chance of getting that job. Absolutely. He's showing up, good attitude, thankful for the opportunity to be there, thankful for what you already got. I, You know, there's a lot of people who hire based on attitude. Big time. Because the way they've been hiring before hasn't worked out. That's why the position's available. And and that guy's going to sit there and he's going to look at the ingredients he's got in front of him and mm -hmm. say, what can I bake with this? Yeah, there you go. Weevils and all. Weevils and all. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Woo. Good stuff, Doc. Thank you. And thank you guys uh, for listening to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tish, for my wonderful birthday present today. Happy birthday to we got Doc in the house. We got Pastor Mike on the mic. All right. Have an awesome week. See you guys. <laughs>